All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kodobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the CSA Contaris MEU mod, which is yet another one of the glorious packs being made by forum user HRaban. And what this particular one does look to add into the game is a pretty sizable number of parts inspired by various designs and concepts being made by the Europeans. And that is pretty awesome, so let's jump right on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what this does offer. Now let's grab ourselves a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison sake and then of course turn on our janitor's closet mod filter just leaving on a Contere's MEU. And we will start with our command pods as usual taking a look at the first one here. Ooh, though before I do I should briefly mention I'm gonna kinda gloss over a lot of specifics in this mod because just like the last Last episode, we have kind of a large number of parts. So I'm just going to go over the sort of main details. So the first command pod here is the ATB service module, which as you can see is an unmanned command pod with a built in data transmitter reaction wheel, SAS, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. And overall is a pretty good looking tank. I mean, it's, you know. A tank as you would expect. Now the next one which kind of goes in line with it at least in my mind is the CTV Advanced Crew Transport Vehicle which is an unmanned command pod but can hold up to five kerbals. Does also have a built-in data transmitter. It does have some additional textures as you can see here and of course RCS built-in reaction wheel SAS crew report 700 electric charge and then 100 monopropellant and that baby goes right on there and of course as I did mention does have a uh, nice selection of different textures you can go with very cool overall and nice to have a five person command pod now the next thing we have is the UCH lander pod which if we pop that right up there does have a very nice look to it. I do especially like the little windows there. It kind of just looks like a tank that you'd expect, but then does have those, which is pretty cool. And as for its stats, it's unmanned, but can have up to two Kerbals, has a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, electric charge, and monopropellant. Now the next thing we have here is a fully unmanned command pod, which is the Rex Avionics System, which is interesting. It's basically just a little spike thing, which does go along with some other Rex parts we'll see later on. But it is an unmanned command pod with a built-in data transmitter reaction wheel, SAS, and just electric charge. A very interesting little thing. Now the next uh, four command pods we have are my favorites in this pack. We have the Expert, which if we pop that on there is a very cool looking thing and does, of course, if we go to our stats here, have a built-in ablator. It is another unmanned pod with a built-in data transmitter, RCS, reaction wheel, SAS, ablator, electric charge, and monopropellant. We then have a, another all unmanned command pod, the CIXV Space Rider, which is another pretty cool little thing. And if we do right click, does have a little compartment with a nice little solar panel. Now the stats on this one, built in ablator, unmanned command pod with data transmitter, the solar panel producing 0.5 electric charge per second. It is a lifting surface, has built in RCS, a reaction wheel, a log temperature and gravity science experiment, electric charge, and monopropellant. And let's get a little bit better of a view in on that thing. Very, very cool overall with the nice RCS thrusters back there. Now the next one is the CIXV reusable landing vehicle. Just a different sort of version of the one that we have right here. This one without an internal compartment, which, you know, hey, maybe you like that. And of course, as a built-in ablator, is unmanned with a data transfer transmitter, lifting surface, RCS, reaction wheel, the gravity and temperature experiments, the electric charge, and monopropellant. There we go. And of course, my favorite part in this entire mod, the Hermes. Oh uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good little shuttle. 
Oh, it's beautiful. And if we right click and extend its panels, it does open up a, a lovely cargo bay with of course built-in solar panels. And it will hold up to four crew members with a minimum of one crew member to operate. It does of course have a built-in ablator data transmitter. The deployable solar panels doing 8.4 electric charge per second is a lifting surface, has RCS reaction wheel, electric charge and monopropellant and overall is a pretty cool little shuttle for you to use and who doesn't want that now next on into the fuel tanks category we have a number of different size tanks the a5 being liquid fuel and oxidizer which as you can see is oh boy big very big there we go we then have the a6 escb liquid fuel and oxidizer tank with some a very very cool look to it and as you did see another attachment point down here so you can put your engine there and then attachment point here for a good fairing now the next part that we do have is the a6 propellant tank which oh boy, again a liquid fuel and oxidizer also gigantic and beautiful. Now let's move on to the next, if I can actually click things, the Aliana S3L, which is a liquid fuel and oxidizer tank, not quite so large as the last few. We then have the Aliana S3S LH2 tank, so just a slightly smaller version of the last one there. Again, liquid fuel and oxidizer. We then have the Aliana Stage 2 tank, liquid fuel and oxidizer oxidizer there then the as1 oh boy was that uh 10,000 there we go which is again just a very large liquid fuel and oxidizer tank then moving on to the as1 the 7500 liquid fuel and oxidizer tank slightly smaller than the last we then have the 8000 version with liquid fuel and oxidizer the 7500 flitz blitz tank liquid fuel and oxidizer again but uh much smaller and slimmer than the others uh we then have have the ATV advanced service module holding just monopropellant a very cool little thing there with of course attachment points on top and bottom we then also have the CTV advanced service module also holding a monopropellant basically being the smaller brother to this one and then we have the Dunnerkeel long tank holding liquid fuel and oxidizer. Quite a thin little tank, but useful. And then the Dunnerkeel tank, which is even smaller right there. And then one of those Rex tanks, remember that weird little fin thing? This being a mono propellant holding lifting surface. Uh, there we go. That is indeed a thing, which is kind of interesting. And finally, the Lyra E third stage liquid fuel and oxidizer tank. Very interesting coloring on that one. I do like it. A little bit, uh, a little bit unique with that different color. Don't see that too often here. And then we move into the engine category, where if we zoom in here, we have <laughs> oh, a lot of engines. Now let's take a look at the first one here, the 4N ATV, which is just a nice little uh, small engine here using monopropellant. We then have the A5 ESC using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and of course having some built-in liquid fuel and oxidizer for your convenience. We have the A5 ESP also holding some liquid fuel and oxidizer and of course burning it. A very cool little tank, I think probably my favorite looking of the tanks here. Well, maybe perhaps this one, which we'll get to in a little bit. Then we have the A6 V3 plus Wazer Coupe, which is a pretty darn powerful liquid fuel and oxidizer engine, a very useful. And then moving on, we have the Eliana PAL, which is a liquid fuel and oxidizer engine, which is, uh, you know, nicely go along the side radially. And of course, holds its own liquid fuel and oxidizer. We then also have the Eliana PAP, which is a solid rocket booster with, of course, solid rocket fuel going radially attached. We then have the EHM-7 Loire, which is another liquid fuel and oxidizer tank. We then have a uh, another size variant of it. And then the Sane, which is similar, but a bit more detailed, all three of which using liquid fuel and oxidizer. Then we have the Lyra Av 
love them, which is a pretty cool little uh, engine. I just like it because of all the detailing. You not only have all this stuff down here, but if we switch it up at the top, it also has a lot more stuff in there. A very cool little engine, which does also have a data transmitter, is an unmanned command pod all in and of itself, and is a liquid fuel and oxidizer burning engine with even its own built-in RCS reaction wheel, SAS, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. It's basically its own ship in and of itself, and that is freaking sweet. I, I actually really do like this thing. It's a wonderful, wonderful little item. We then, if I zoom back out, have a liquid fuel and oxidizer very thin, interesting looking engine in the OTR for S4. We then have the uh, just larger version of it and then a medium sized version of it. Very interesting rockets, not a usual sort of design we see, but very, very cool. Nonetheless, let's pop those off. We then have a series of solid rocket boosters varying in size. If I just zoom out here, we'll show off the different ones there. We got the small, medium, and a large. And then, of course, we have a, another a variant of a solid rocket booster here, there, and even larger one there. Look at all the solid rocket potential. It's beautiful. We then have a series of liquid fuel and oxidizer engines here. If we... Oh boy, hold down Alt. It's not wanting to go. Let's now zoom in, zoom in. There we go. Perfect. So we have a series of liquid fuel engines. Well, this is liquid fuel. This one's monopropellant and tiny. And then we have another monopropellant, even tinier. And then we move to another liquid fuel and oxidizer engine, which dwarfs the three of those, which is pretty nice. We then have the RKC2X2B here, which is a sort of mid-range engine. Not too powerful, but, you know, useful in liquid fuel and oxidizer. We then have have another liquid fuel and oxidizer, the Flitz Blitz Solo. There we go, very nicely detailed engine. We then have the Flitz Bits Dual, which is just two of the Flitz Bits we just looked at. Again, nice and detailed, a cool little engine. Now the RK V4V4. Just a, you know, nice series of different engines there using liquid fuel and oxidizer, and then a, you know, Different size variant, effectively, right there. Very cool. Now we then have another solid rocket booster of another variety and another size variant there. And the last engine is, again, another solid rocket booster. There we go. Beautiful. Now moving on to command and control, we have one nano RCS port here. Just a small little four-way RCS block. Very handy. Now on to structural, we have the Aliana V adapter, which is you know, just a, a nice looking adapter and uh, does have a built-in fairing, as you can see there. We then have the CTV adapter, the CTV advanced adapter, which actually has a built-in decoupler, and then the KSA docking node, which is an unmanned command pod with a data transmitter, reaction wheel, crew report, electric charge, and mono propellant, and is a beautiful base for a potential space station, which is pretty sweet there. Now, next is in coupling, where we have the Deku decoupler, which is great for some of those little uh, space plane... Uh, command pods that we have. We then have a series of decouplers in various sizes with that one there, that one there, and that one uh, there. Excellent. Going from a small to large size. Perfect. Now, next is the Lyra E Vus decoupler. A very nice sort of, uh, I guess, fairing protecting decoupler. Very cool. And then we have two lovely decouplers with built-in retro boosters. And who doesn't love having a decoupler with an engine attached to make sure that your stuff clears? It is quite nice. And, uh, yeah, yeah, lovely little retro boosters. Then in payload, we have the Hermes docking and storage module here, which is just a lovely little thing to go inside the car go bay of that Hermes shuttle and of course does have three attachment points for your use. Now in aerodynamics we have a lovely little wing, 
a lovely little nose cone, well actually not quite so little, a lovely little air brake for you to deploy and, you know, brake with, and a flap for the Rex that, of course, we were looking at earlier. Very good overall. Always nice to have any additional aerodynamic things. Now, nothing in ground. In thermal, we do have a CTV heat shield. There we go, with, of course, ablator, because, I mean, you know, heat shield. In uh, electrical, we only have one small little solar panel here, which, if we flip around, is, you know, small but useful at 0.3 electric charge per second. Nothing in communication. In science, we do have the Columbo Habitat, which is a functioning science lab with crew report and is perfect for your stations. And then the UHC Processing Lab, again, another science laboratory. Uh, now, the Columbo holding four Kerbals and the UHC holding two. Need to mention that, of course. And then finally, in utility, we have uh, let's take a look at the Columbo Op Habitat, which holds four and has the crew report experiment. We then also have a crew cabin, which holds three and also has a crew report, and a recycling center for TAC life support, which, you know, has a lot of electric charge and, of course, holds a Kerbal and does a crew report experiment. We then also have an LCD cube, which, if I just sort of pop on one of these things, you should be able to see... The light it projects right there, it is just an LCD cube that projects, you know, light. Very fun, though, to have. We then have a Rex pressurized storage module, which is a lifting surface, of course, going with that Rex command pod from earlier. We then have the CTV docking adapter right here. And then also the CTV adapter here. And finally, the ATV auto dock radar, which is a nice little extendable tool. And there we go. That is all the parts for the CSA Conteres MEU mod. So let's take a look at what you could potentially build with this. And of course, there were all the fun rocket parts. But what really interested me, because I love space stations, is all the space station parts. So I put together a quick little MEU space station with, of course, a Hermes dock to it. Oh, I love shuttles. They're just gorgeous. And this goes so nicely with everything. I really do love this pack. I enjoy not just shuttles, but there's a lot of other good command pods, great resources for building space stations. All in all, a good quality pack like what we've seen so far with the other CSA Conteres parts mods. So yeah, just a, just a fun little thing. And... Well, frankly, that's really all to talk about with it then. If you would like to have a look at this mod for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. And I definitely would say to go and check it out. These are some pretty sweet parts to play with. And I'm sure you could come up with something much more interesting to build than what I threw together in about five minutes here just to show it off. But that is, frankly, going to be it for today, folks. Folks, I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at another fun mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one. Now let's see what chaos I can rot by undoing all these decouplers. Beautiful. Beautiful. Later, folks!